Hello everyone, thought I'd create a tutorial on how I'm going to create my pool with my four freshly installed 4TB hard disks. I'm running the new version of FreeNAS 11.2. You will see the new interface here. For anyone that wants to use the legacy interface, you just hit the cog and go to legacy web interface and say continue and you will see that a switch is there. Now if you want to switch back, all you need to do is in the toolbar at the top here for the URL, just take off the word legacy and hit enter and you'll be back to the new interface. Okay, so let me walk you through what I'm going to do. Okay, you will see under storage pools, we want to create a brand new pool. So we hit create pool, leave default. Okay, here we go. So what we got here is asking us for the name of our new pool. So we'll call it NAS2 because I've already got one other NAS. So we'll call it NAS2 pool. Okay, so now what we do is we will add the disks that we want to use. So the four, four terabyte hard drives. This extra hard drive I've got in here is just a 120 gigabyte SSD, which I'll create in its own little quick drive later on in the future. Okay, so we click the four that we want, add to the new VDEV. Okay, so now it's asking us what sort of RAID do we want to select. By default, you notice it's set to RAID Z2. RAID Z2 will mean that if any one of these two hard drives fail, which means two can completely die and I'll be able to recover the data that is installed on the seven terabytes worth of data that is created in this pool. So it basically gives me a redundancy of any, if two of these drives fail at the same time, I'm completely fine. I just stick in the new replacement drives and rebuild the data. But I lose in the meantime, a lot of my space. So what I prefer to use is creating a RAID Z now this will basically mean if n if one disk fails i'm fine but if i have two disks fail i lose everything but i'm happy with that in the five years that i've been running multiple drives i've only had one drive fail and it wasn't a full failure it was just bad blocks and i replaced the drive and rebuilt it better to be safe than sorry so as you notice when i've created it in a raid z I will get 10.91 terabytes worth of usable space, which is basically adding up three of these drives. And the fourth is the redundancy in any one of these that, in case they fail. Okay, so now we've got this all ready to go. We hit create, and it says warning, all contexts will be erased. All the contents of the added disk will be erased, which is completely fine because there is nothing on there. So we say create pool. And now we please wait. Okay, we have our data set created. Now we want to be able to make a new data set that we can use to host our file so we can access from Windows. Okay, so what we do is we make a brand new data set underneath it, give it a title, say that the client that will be accessing this is Windows, because that's the most, that is the type of client that will most often use this data set. All the defaults are relatively fine, then we hit save. Now if you expand out, you will see that I have my media library data set. Now you notice above it's got IOCage. This here is mainly used from FreeNAS when you want to deploy jails, etc. It can dump all its data in there, which is fine. Okay, so we're good to go with our media library. Okay, now in order to do Windows sharing, it's under here, under sharing Windows. Now there's a few things that I need to make sure that you guys all have in offer. Now because I'm just going to be creating a simple area that you can access on your network without having to put in passwords, we can cover 
protected folders etc in a different video but this one here we want guest access to be able to access it so first come into accounts under users now make sure you have a guest account so if I scroll down you will see under here somewhere here is my guest account so let's edit that particular account now this is what the setting is so it's got the full name guest the primary group is guest I've got an auxiliary group that I created called media now I do this quite commonly if you do not have this group created I can show you in a second where to create it and this is my current settings for it so if it looks similar to this for this user guest that's fine then hit save now that one is done now have a look in the groups you'll see a media group that I created now this is used later in jails etc that I create so here's the media group I created you can easily make your own group by add but I'll show you the settings from a media group well it's not really a groups are just a group we dump people into so there's no real settings but I can show you the members that's attached to it at the moment and you can see under here you've got guest and media that are part of it which you saw from the previous page okay so that's the first step I would like you to make sure is configured just to make sure that your user guest looks like that okay now the second step that we need to do now is to be able to create our share okay so we go to sharing we we'll make a brand new nice window share hit add okay so now it's asking us where is this so we hit this button we expand out the mount there's our pool now media library is the folder now we allow guest access okay now under advanced we make sure that looks all good nothing else specific to go in there allow guest access is fine you can hit only allow guest access but it'll be fine now hit save okay now that is created so now all that's left is be able to access from a Windows host to make sure that it all works correctly okay so now we've connected to our NAS on the network you see there it is there now let's try going into our media library file success we're inside now let's do a test of writing a file oh no we need permission to write the library why is this let's do some troubleshooting let's right click that media library properties security okay you notice we have everyone which is just the standard windows group now you see these are the ones that's picked up from freenas one called root one called wheel but we know that those can't access that particular share because we don't have these set up locally on this host so now we have to go back to freenas and make sure that our data set has the right permissions okay we're back inside freenas now under the pools expand out your data set now here's the media library now let's have a look at this under edit permissions you will see this part here that I didn't apply correctly before see we're applying a user credentials root wheel let's apply the guest account and make sure that the group is also set to guest now we want to apply permissions recursively which basically means if there was already any folders existing in there but we also want future directories created inside there also to apply all these permissions so we hit this and it says are you sure you want to do that because you might affect other directories below that's in case you have customized folders with different permissions you do not want to break them but this is brand new so we have no issues so let's just confirm and now we save and we are done so now let's go back and test it again 
OK, we're back. Now let's have a look to see if these permissions applied. Let's right click properties, security, look at this, we have guest. Now this one here is a mistake left over from when I had a previous title. It shouldn't be there, but it stayed there. But you should just have the one. OK, so let's go into our library and let's do a test. Hello, that saved fine. Save, and we're done. Now we have a file that we have created on there that is saveable. So now if we want, it's just as simple as going back here and mapping your drive, and you'll be able to map it, and it will be available on the machine on Windows. You can also see on my PC, Go to properties, and you see there's a the full size with the terabytes. Okay, let's go back to our free NAS. Okay, we're back. So that pretty much covers on how to format your disks, create your data sets, and then create your data sets in organization structures. So the cool thing is you can add as many different libraries and folders with all custom permissions and they all share that main root data pool that you created with 10 terabytes, which is easy as just creating a brand new data set underneath and giving it whatever title you want. And follow the previous steps from beforehand and you'll have separate folders that will be browsable from Windows. And you can play with all the permissions, and I purposely showed you what it looked like when the permissions were broken to show you which ones have particular access, because it's as simple as going into users, creating a custom user with a name, and then applying that group permissions on that particular data set that you saw inside here. and changing it to, for instance, myself, Simon. And then you know that only that user can access it because on your accounts, you can easily set up passwords under here. And then this will give you all the abilities that you need to do in order to create separate family folders and networks, etc., for documents. So it is as simple as that. So that covers the details on how to create Windows shares and also creating your storage drives that you saw with all my disks and formatting it and getting it in the right Z pool. So I hope this tutorial was useful. I know it was slightly all over the place, but I thought I'd show it on a fresh machine while I was setting it up for my home network. So enjoy. Thanks everyone. Bye.